After you have made the power supply to the EWR2, the EWR2 goes through a self-administered test. After successful completion of the test, the start screen appears. On the screen, all the important gas measuring values are displayed. On the display screen, you can see the current gas flow through the device. Below is the gas inlet pressure displayed in the unit. In the small information window, you can see the selected gas type. Optionally, a star may appear above the gas type if there is a shunt signal over 5% in the EWR2. You will see the on-off button here. By pressing the on-off button for 3 seconds, you will switch off the device. Off means in bypass mode, and the device valve is fully open. When the red LED is lit, the device is in bypass. The EWR2 will still record the current gas flow rate, the gas inlet pressure, and, if a shunt is connected, the current signal during this time. To turn the EWR2 back on, press and hold the on-off button for 3 seconds. The EWR2 will restart, log in, and go through the self-administered test again, and the home screen will appear. On the right side of the EWR2, you will see the directional pad with the up, down, right, left, and OK buttons. A short press of the on-off button will set the escape function so you can jump to another menu level. You can select different main menu items by using the buttons on the right and left. There is the home screen, the information about the initial pressure, the set value, and the weld current value. When welding, the information changes and you can see the target flow and actual flow of gas. On the next menu page, you can see the current indicator in percentages. The shunt signal is detected by the EWR2 and expressed as a percentage. At 300 amps shunt, that's 100% power equivalent to 300 amps of weld current. On the screen, you can also see the internal device temperature. Scroll through the next main menu to see the input and output pressure in the device and on the output side. The last item in the menu is the main menu. The main menu is accessed by pressing the OK button. In the main menu, you can set the device. Start with the sub-item authorization. After each restart, the EWR2 is in operator mode, which means the user can see all the data but cannot change it. To change this, you must enter a password. Click OK and enter the password 1 0 5 4. With the buttons right and left, you jump to the individual numbers. With the buttons up and down, you change the numbers. After entering the password, confirm with OK. Now you are logged in as the setter. Now press once to the left to get to parameter. Press the OK button and then set the following things. First, the base flow through the device. The base flow is the gas volume flow which occurs when the solenoid valve in the feed box is open and no welding current is applied. To adjust the basic flow, press OK and use the up and down keys to set the desired value. In this case, we have the default value of 14 liters per minute. Since the EWR2 can add up to 7 liters depending on the weld current, the maximum output of the EWR2 is 21 liters per minute at 100% shunt signal. When you have finished, press OK again, and after saving parameter is gone, all data is saved. The set value is now retained even if the power supply is pulled. The second value that you can set is the outlet pressure under set pressure. This is the pressure that is set between the EWR2 output and the closed solenoid valve in the feed box. The value is set to 0.6 bar by default. The third value is the gas type. This is necessary because all EWR2 units have a gas flow meter calibrated for air. 
Since welding gases have different densities to the air, you have to set the gas here. Five gases are already pre-stored for your convenience. Five more memory slots are available for custom mixtures. Among these, you can store your welding gas. Select a freely configurable gas option and press OK. You then have to enter the gas conversion factor for your gas used. Press OK again, then enter the gas conversion factor. Click OK and the value is saved. You have now made all the settings of EWR2. In the main menu, you also have the submenu logbook available. There you again hit OK. Here you can see the last 10 error messages stored. If you press the right button, you will also see when the error occurred. By pressing the on off button, you return to the main menu. In the main menu, you see the menu item settings. There you have the following settings. On the one hand, you can choose the device language. Languages available are German, English, and Spanish. You also have other settings that apply only to the EWR2 net. To set the CAN open interface, you have to select the CAN node ID that is required and the CAN speed. You can also set the Ethernet interface on the EWR2 net. You can either assign the IP address statically or obtain it automatically via a DHCP. By default, a static IP address is set. Here you can see the IP address of the EWR2 net. If you have changed them, the device will restart automatically. Only after the restart will the new IP address be used. You can also set the net mask and gateway for the Ethernet interface on the EWR2 net. After you have done all of these settings, you may jump back to the home screen and the EWR2 is ready for use.